Hi, Chris Gellert here with Pinnacle Training Consulting Systems. Today we're going to talk about before in, in this which review is unit one, the foundation of the spine. When I get into the spine, which is connective tissue, uh, the joints, the bones, and, and how things really move. So this clarifies as you're watching at home with this first unit the important information, but should make sense seeing it visually and clarifying to understand it so we can apply it with your client. So when we talk about the spine, we're talking about cervical is the upper neck, thoracic is the middle, lower lumbar is course down here or down above the tailbone. When we talk about bones, there's seven in the neck, 12 in the lower back, and five in the lumbar region. On the back side, you can see each bone has a spinous process, a little knobby guy. It gets larger as it goes down, and then the sides is called the transverse process, where kind of the wing. Um, between those are called facets. Facets are a little bit of a groove. Their job is to help with rotation and side bending. So when someone turns their head, say to the um, right, they're gonna move down on the left and go up on the right. Or as you can see, leaning to the left, they're gonna go down on this left side and go up on the right side. And they basically facilitate motion. In the thoracic region, they're at a 60 degree angle here, and then the lumbar, they're in a roughly 90 degree angle. So they go from 45 to 60 to 90 degrees accordingly. On the side, you can see you also have nerves. Those are peripheral nerves. They split, they go to each side of the body. They communicate information to the arms, to the legs, giving enough information about where we are, what we're doing in space. When we look at the lower part of the body, we have connective tissue. And what is connective tissue? Connective tissue is made up of fascia, ligaments, tendons, muscles, and really a whole smorgasbord of uh, things, including muscles that facilitate movement. So muscles on the top of the neck, all the way to the lower back. Fascia is on the lower part of the back called the thoracolumbar fascia. And basically fascia is going to be um, made up of, of, of glycans and water that facilitates movement. And if it's restricted or tight, that can affect movement patterns that can cause trigger points or for pain. Muscles in the neck we have up here, you have the rhomboids in the middle back, you have your upper trapezius from octave C7, T1 and T5 is going to be the middle, um, uh, middle trapezius, and then T6, C12 is going to be your low trap. Lats come around on the side, T6, T12, and then you've got your rotator cuff, which we'll talk about in a minute. The other thing I want to talk about is osteokinematic motion versus orthokinematic motion. So osteo means the bones and how they move between one another. So osteo means the moves the movement between one bone on another. Comparison to orthokinematic motion, when we look at the shoulder here, so if we look at someone raising the shoulder or side raising, the humerus goes up but the supraspinatus, which goes from the supraspinous fossa to the greater tubercle, abducts the shoulder. So that's the move between the muscle in the joint, or we call the articular surface. So that's a little different between uh, the difference between osteochematic and orthochematic motion. When we talk about dysfunctions, uh, a lot of injuries can happen in the neck. You can see from the front that the discs are small in the front. As they go down through the thoracic, they get bigger and they get very large on the lower back. So most uh, clients and patients typically have disc injuries and the L4, L5, L5 is one. Because of that large, because of that bending motion, it opens up the joint. It puts stress on the disc. It puts stress on the uh, vertebra or the, the, also the nerve roots in comparison to the upper neck area. So that's the main reason why more disc injuries occur in the lower back versus the neck. Also on the back side, you can see in the tailbone, there's a bone called the ilium, both sides where the ilium meets the sacrum and then the coccyx. The sacrum that meets the ilium is called the sacroiliac joint, and that's in the front as well. So that needs to be balanced and symmetrical. If there's a dysfunction between here there could be a rotation problem that causes an imbalance that can cause trigger points and pain and again alter mood pattern. And the next section we're going to talk about is a little more about muscles and a little more about how they're moving and common dysfunction between those areas and the, and the upper neck 
as well as the lower back accordion.